How do I, how do I go? I can't, don't have an option to share my screen. Um, wait a sec. Um, what, what about that? What, what about that? What about that? Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, you uh, should have a host, okay, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, what about a host? Chance for the host to you. Uh, Jeremy, I think you're the host now. Can you try sharing your screen? Yeah, it says uh, host disabled screen sharing. Uh, sorry, sorry, mom moment, please. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Yeah. You will be the hoster. You have already done. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have already done it. Can everyone uh, see the screen? Yes. Jeremy, I'll translate sentence by sentence or maybe a small paragraph. You just stop when you think is the right time. I'll translate for you. Okay. Well, let me know if uh, you want me to repeat anything. Um, okay, thank you everyone again for uh, joining us tonight. It's a great privilege to be speaking to you all. Uh, tonight I'll be speaking to you about uh, the D3 group in HDR, uh, which is short for Data Driven Design. Um, -driven design, uh, my name is Jeremy Graham and I'm the computational design leader for HDR. Um, Jeremy Graham is um, uh, the computational design leader uh, just a little background about HDR. Uh, we're a global company of about 10,000 people uh, with offices uh, mostly in the US, but also uh, in the Austral Australasian area as well. Uh, uh, as part of the D3 group, um, we work across all of the sectors at HDR, including architecture and also engineering. Um, and that is part of the, as I mentioned, D3 group. Uh, where it is our goal to essentially use data to help inform strategic design decision making. We do that through, through three main streams. Uh, the first is the predictive analytics group which is made up of data scientists and data engineers, and they specialize in cleaning and analyzing data. Jeremy, can you say that, uh, what's the first um, stream again? Uh, the predictive analytics stream. We also have the operational design stream, which is mainly industrial engineers, and they specialize in simulation. Um, um, 
operational 怎么翻译呢？ Uh, say、uh, uh, oldest actuary. 呃、uh, ，第二第二部门主要是做工业设计决策。嗯。And then lastly is the computational design stream, which I'm leading here in Australia, and we specialize in developing the tools and workflows to facilitate the analysis and optimization of data. 嗯、um, ，第三个，嗯，先，嗯，第第第三个部门就是我们的计算设计部门，是由 Jeremy 在在澳洲进行领导的。我们主要是做一些数据决策的，啊、um, uh, ，工具来帮助整个过程。And so the main focus on any project we work on is, of course, a data. 嗯、um, ，我我我我们的主要任务就是去和。这个数据进行啊啊、um, um, 深入的工作。Uh, to give you an example on a project, there are a huge amount of data points that we can access, whether they are public, private, or project related. 嗯、um, ，在每个项目中，我们有非常非常巨量的啊啊、um, um, 数据来进行啊、um, 帮助我们，不管他们是就是公共的数据，还是私有的数据，还是项目中本身的数据。For example,、uh, at a campus level design, there might be data such as spatial data,、uh, functional space information, where it's located,、uh, demographics, location, and cost. Um, 在嗯、um, 在就是这是一个大学我我们以大学校园项目举例，就是这在这种项目当中，我们有嗯、um, 就是功能分区的数据有嗯。Um, Jeremy, what's the second、um, type of data you were talking about?、Uh, well,、data? yeah, sort of、um, functional spaces and where they're located across across the campus, for example. Yeah.、Um, and and what 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 other type of data do we have? So we look at demographic, population data,、uh, location of people,、uh, and cost is usually a common data point. Uh, we we have no population size. 人口结构的数据、人口分布的数据，还有就是每一个建筑、每一个嗯具体的施工，它的嗯嗯造价的数据。And as the D3 group,、uh, we take all of these data points. Excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Uh, Jeremy. Uh, because you are the、uh, co-host, could you please have a check the waiting room? There are some、uh -huh. other people still waiting in the waiting room. Okay. Yep. Please, please approve it.、Uh, yep. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, I need to get out of prison. Okay, thank you. No problem.、Uh, I'll keep admitting them as they come in.、Uh, and so, as I was, I was saying,、uh, as the D three group, we take all of those data points and we combine those three streams to develop what we call data driven models. Um, 在第三项目组当中，我们把以上所提到的所有的数据进行啊、uh, 分析整合，然后做成一个数据迁移模型。With this data-driven model, each of these different streams can perform different、uh, analysis and optimization、um, for for use on the project. Um,、uh, 每每一个不同类别的数据能够提供不同的啊啊、uh, uh, 分分析结果来帮助我们进行项目决策 These models come in、uh, lots of different forms and different tools and platforms depending on what project we're we're working on. 嗯、um, ，这些数据来源于不同的平台、不同的工具上面，然后，嗯，取决于我们是用什么工具来进行这一些，嗯，嗯，设计工作。To give you an example, uh, this is a uh a mock-up of a project we recently worked on with a large social media company, uh, designing their new data centers. 
，嗯，给大家举一个例子，这个是我们在一个就是这这是一个嗯平行项目，就是说这不是真实，就是在根据我们实际的项目进行的一些改动。这个是一个非常大的啊、嗯、社交媒体网站，然后我们帮他们去做啊、嗯、数据库呃数据他们的数据中心的一个嗯设计活动。This data-driven model、uh, pulled in all the data around how the users moved around the data center, such as swipe、uh, key card access. Uh, and then we were able to map it to this data-driven model and analyze、uh, the different efficiencies of the layout. Um, this data mapping model, uh, the most important data mapping is, um, is workers who enter the data center and exit the data center and enter the data center. We map the data to the data mapping model. 总结归纳，然后在在整个园区呃数据中心园区设计的时候，对这个数据进行重新的投射，然后去分析他们的就是每一个不同的嗯方案之间的优劣。This analysis model, this data-driven model, allowed us to objectively determine whether the next design for the data centers were better or worse. Than the last design based on this metric. Um, this this kind of data mapping model can help us to determine, uh, uh, objectively determine this our our design is better than the original design. There is a very objective evidence. So today, I'd like to show you um some of the tools and, and workflows that we're developing to assist planners. Um, and these tools use computational techniques, uh, but they're intended to be used by、uh, lots of people. Um, 今天我们来分享一些我们开发的一些工具，然后这一些就是是基于计算设计的一些啊啊、um, um, 就是方式，但是我们希望它能够被更多的人，就哪怕没有就数据是呃呃。计算设计的这个背景也能够使用它。And so to do that, we、uh, we intentionally abstract the, away the complexity.、Um, and so I'll give you some insight into how the tools work and how we use them to abstract and use data in the design process. 嗯，我我们理解就是这些就是工具在开发的过程当中会非常复杂，我们会就有意的将它进行简化。The first tool is what we call the module planner, and this is a tool that、uh, we are currently still working on. But the intention is to assist planners with modular space planning. In this example, lab planning. Um, this one is called the modular space planning tool, or the modular space planning tool. This tool's purpose is to assist planners with modular space planning. This tool's purpose is to assist planners with modular space planning. This tool's purpose 嗯、um, ，区域规划在这个例子当中，我们是帮助嗯， um, 就是实验室进行就是区域功能的规划。当然，这个项目依然还在进行。The way that、uh, lab planners typical typically work、uh, at HDR are in this to give you some background are in these three different stages: functional planning, module planning, and workstation planning. 嗯、um, ，HDR 的嗯， um, 就是这个。嗯、um, ，实实验室规划师一般是会通过以下三个步骤来进行他们的规划。第一个步骤是去啊、um, 规划，就是这个实验室所需的功能。然后第二个是规划这个实验室所需要的模块，就根据功能的模块。第三个是把这模块实现成为每一个就是啊、uh, 工作站。Uh, functional planning is essentially a bubble planning or, or... Planning the adjacencies of spaces at a high level. Um, 功能分呃，功能规划主要指的就是在就把每个功能看作一个大的大泡泡，然后把它们就是邻近的关系之类的先给就是邻近关系跟逻辑上的先后顺序先给做出来
once functional planning is finished, it moves into uh, module planning, which is around planning around a common structural grid. Um, and once that is determined, uh, they then go into workstation uh, planning to look at how they can fit in the modular uh, workstations. Uh, Sorry, Jamie, did you use the word uh, space planning? Oh, just uh, yeah, you could say workstation planning. It, it's really just the modular workstations that they fit yeah. into the grid. Sure. Um, just we just the and the and the and the and and the in the group chat, someone was asking if this is a space uh, space planning. Uh, it is essentially space planning. Yep. Um. 对，嗯，刚才，嗯，嗯，刚才群聊中有人提问，嗯，对，就是问这个算不算是一种空间规划？然后我们可以认为这是一种空间规划。Yep. We can continue. So the tool that uh, we've been developing is aiming to. Uh, streamline this process because this can take weeks or months to work through with the client. So we're telling, developing a space planning, a data-driven model that can streamline this process and analyze the data at each step. Mm-hmm. 与客户一起进行，嗯，通常会有嗯上几周的时间，好几周的时间都会在这个上面。我们希望通过计算设计的方法，把这个过程尽量的简化。Um, Jeremy, just I'm trying to remind you that there might be someone in the uh in the waiting area. Would you would you mind admitting them? Yeah, I'm I'm admitting them, uh, nonstop. <laughs> okay, cool.、Um, so, so the tool is quite basic. Um. Here is a, the simple interface, and the way that it works is it start, allows the user to start off creating a grid. Now, keep in mind, there's no while there is computational design techniques here, they are hidden、uh, to the user, so that that complexity is abstracted away. Um, 就是这这个的第一个步骤呢，就是允许用户就我我们做的这个工具的第一个步骤呢，就允许用户设设计一个就自己的网格。啊、uh, ，我们理解就是啊， uh, 这个过程对于普通的用户来讲可能会略稍复杂，所以说我们会把它在就是藏在一个嗯，就是更呃、uh, 图形界面之后，可能有些更加复杂的算法。呃、uh, ，this allows more people to adopt the tool. Uh, so people that aren't familiar with computational design can still access these parametric models. 嗯、um, ，所以就是这这能够帮助就是不理解计算设计的人。不影响他们使用我们的这些工具，然后来享受到这一些计算设计的便利。Once the user has set the parameters、uh, for the grid, they can then import a series of space types that they want to work with.、Uh, in this example, it's lab spaces. So the user is is importing a set of preset space types. Um, 在我们设计完这一个啊。Um, 就网格之后，第二步就是把我们所需的这一种空间的类别给进行一个呃、um, 输入，就是这一个可以看到从屏幕上来说，就是输入一个空间类别文件。这个文件呃，这这这个类别是提前设计好的。嗯。Once they've imported those types, uh, they can start basically painting them onto the grid. So they have these little modular units, and they can start pasting them onto the preset grid. Um, 在呃、uh, 输入这些类别之后，我们就可以就就就就像涂鸦一样，在这一个已有的呃、uh, 网格上面进行涂鸦。What this what this is doing is um basically each of those spaces have data attached to them. 
and that data might be what type of space it is, uh, what department it's part of, what is its cost uh, per square unit of area, uh, and whatever other data we want to attach to it. Um, 这每一个功能,就我们先看到的上面做的每一个色块上面,它在背后都会有很多的数据一起进行互动, 包括它的功能是什么,然后它的使用人数,它的预算,这些东西都会在背后进行. And so that data allows us to analyze uh, what the user is doing as they place those spaces. In this example, which you're seeing in the top left, is it's benchmarking those areas against uh, historic or uh, previous projects to understand how um, the areas or what areas are required based on the types of spaces that have been placed. Um, 在这个过程当中，就是我们可以嗯通过了解，就是用户的行为来，就是进行就与与与过往项目的一些对比，然后提供一些建议啊。不好，不好意思，这不是一个完全的指示，我直接通过我的理解来说，可能有点长。嗯
一个工具。Uh, this is another uh, base, a simple tool in Rhinoceros that allows users to import all of the space data that, that universities have around their functional areas and their, their population of students and import all that into this, this uh, model, which you can see shows up as a, uh, as a data table in the user interface. 嗯、um, ，这个工具基基于 Rhino， 也就是国内的犀牛的这个软件。然后我们，嗯，刚才第一步就是显示的，就是我们把这些数据进行一个，就是呃呃 import 进行一个输入，然后它可以自动的把，就是我们需要多大的，就是嗯，需需要多大的面积，这个面积里面需要包含多少的学生，就是直观的在模型里面展示出来，从数据直接变成模型。Once that data is is in the model, um, it is attached to each of those spaces, and so each space contains data around uh, what type of function it is, what department uh, it's part of, what is its area, and and, and so on and so forth.、Um, and this can be updated as you're seeing、uh, a colour's been applied to different groups of depart departmental spaces. 嗯、um, ，就是这每一个就是空间色块，它就是其中包含了就是它的功能，它所属的就是学院，然后它可能需要多少人这些东西，然后我们可以很快的给它就是进呃就是进行一些涂色之类的来直观的展示。Uh, the user can then create these lightweight、uh, building volumes,、uh, as you're saying here, and then all of those spaces can be pushed into those buildings.、Um, Almost like water into a glass. Um, this process is, uh, user can just like we use a building model, build a material, and then we can very easily put these pre-made buildings, um, just like we put the water in the bucket. Um, just like we put the water in the bucket. Um, just like we put the water in the bucket. Um, just like we put the water in the bucket. Um, just like we put the water in the bucket. Um, just like we put the water in the bucket. Um, just like we Um, space planning model that allows us to then test different、uh, data options, so we can go back to that original data set and see how, if we adjust,、uh, say, areas of particular、uh, departments or spaces, what impact does that have on that potential future master plan? Um, this one is. 这一个过程，通过这种工具会被极大的简化，方便设计师来，就是说迅速的更改，就是每一个就面积的大小，然后直观的观察，这个对就是整个就是校园整体规划的影响。Uh, and we're not just testing single spaces, but in these uh data models, um, we might want to test different uh. Building configurations or、uh, very high-level building、um, extensions to see what impact that has on the spaces that have been、um, allocated to that building. Um, this is this process not only is in exploring what we need, 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 what we need. 嗯、um, ，我们需要什么样的建筑体量来，就是把这些空间给放进去？我们需要去，比如说在一个原先建筑上加一个拓展，就是扩建，还是说我们需要我们如何在空间上分配这些需要的空间？呃、uh, ，and and we also can apply、um, growth factors to departments. So,、uh, what you're seeing on the screen here is we're applying、uh, a growth factor at a, of a particular department. Say biology to understand if that department's growing at X rate, what impact will that have on those buildings? And you can see that the building, some of the spaces turn red. This is indicating to us that this building might need to be、uh, decanted, or it might need spaces to be reallocated to accommodate for that future master plan. 就是我们同时可以给它加一个。嗯、um, ，就是未来增长的参数，就是这样的话，我们可以预计在未来几年内，某一个特定的，就是教学楼可能会出现就是空间不足的问题。So this model,、um, we use 
with the client. So these models I'm showing you um, are not just for the computational design team. We use these or any of the, the planning team can use this model. Um, but also we actively work, use this model with the client. So in a, in a workshop, we might test different uh, master planning options uh, with their input. And so we're doing it all as a collaborative uh, approach. 通过这个工具可以就是它不仅仅是做计算设计而用而是说我们在日常就是在公司日常的这种就与客户进行就是交流做就是规划的时候就会用到这个工具它能够就是非常直观的就非常迅速的来把这个就是不同的情景给给给 设计出来，然后预测出来，大概会是什么样子？呃， uh, we also use it to look at lots of different options for a future master plan. And so to do that, we develop into these tools uh, optimization techniques. 我们同时也在就探求我们如何就是更多的去探索不同的啊方案，然后我们会用一些就是优呃优化的啊优化的算法。uh, one of those techniques is tying in what we call genetic algorithms. Uh, genetic algorithms uh, is basically what generative design is based on. Um, and they've been around since about the 1970s. So they're a very common way of, optimi of, of looking at optimization. Uh, 核心算法了，就是它从一九七零年开始就被嗯开始讨论，然后现在已经非常应用比较广泛、比较成熟了，在很多领域都会有。The way that they basically work is the algorithm will generate a whole series of options, um, uh, which are called uh, chromosomes. So it will generate about a hundred random chromosomes, and each chromosome represents a potential solution to a problem. Um, 就是这一个, um, 就是算法的, 是, 是, 是这么运作的, 它的第一步呢, 是会, uh, 生成非常多的, all those solutions, all those chromosomes, which we call a population, it will start applying different mutations and crossovers to that popu population, which is basically combining different solutions or swapping different solutions around to try to produce new solutions or what we call new chromosomes. Um, 就所有染色体的集合叫做这个所谓的人口。我也没有更好的翻译方法了，就是人口，就是我们在对不同的染色体酶带之间进行就是变异以及就是杂交，然后通过这种方式来生成新的就是新的方案。And so what we have been doing is uh, designing or engineering these chromosomes to represent a master planning option. So think of a hundred different master planning options that we're combining and mutating to generate new options. And to, to score, well, basically in a genetic algorithm, there are uh, fitness functions which score each chromosome. And so with a master planning option, uh, the fitness function or the score is based on three criteria. And so this is what we call, uh, it's a multi-objective genetic algorithm as it's trying to solve for three different problems at once. Um, Jeremy, can you check if there's anyone waiting in the lobby? Um, I'll quickly translate this. Um, 就是我们会通过一个就是对它的拟合 给他一个拟合得分，就是看，嗯，来衡量每一个不同的染色体代表的这个每一个方案，它对它的优劣，然后我们来把这个就是拟合得分进行一个就是 
呃算总或者加权平均等等，然后来得出这一个 chromosome， 这这一个染色体所对应的方案，它是一个好的方案还是一个不好的方案 ？So this form of optimization、uh, has for the past ten or fifteen years has been mainly done using sort of grasshopper、uh, Galapagos.、Um, And so it requires a, a bit of computational design knowledge. 嗯，这这些算法其实已经在,在过去十年当中已经被成功的应用在了就是呃犀牛软件的这个草蜢插件里面，就是大家熟悉的 grasshopper 草蜢。嗯，通过一个叫 Galapagos 的插件，然后现在呢，就是我们把它直接应用在一个就是我们开发的这个犀牛的插件上面，就相当于省了一刀。就是省了一道工序，你不需要真正的非常深入的理解这一个算法，你可以使用它。呃、uh, ，So what we're doing with this tool, uh, is again, uh, taking away all that complexity, um, and allowing people to use these algorithms with just this、uh, simple interface. 嗯、uh, ，所以我们就通过就是给给它做一个图形界面，然后。这一个过程尽量的简化，因为它只是就量体裁衣的用在我们的就是这一个工具当中。And all this requires is a few different inputs, such as、uh, how 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 many generations or how how large is the population, and what are, what are the probability of some of those mutations and crossovers. 嗯、uh, ，所以说这就这这一个需要就是你来确定的参数呢，就主要就是每一个每一代生成的这一个呃人口里面需要有多少，然后嗯你你需要多少代，然后你有多大的变异的几率或者交叉呃交叉选择的几率。Once the user has selected those、uh, inputs, they can then select the spaces that they want to test pushing into the Uh, different buildings that they're selecting. 在你完成就是选择这一些参数之后，你可以进行选择。你需要去就是衡量哪一些就是呃、um, 空间功能和哪一些建筑建筑质量。Once they have selected those spaces, they can then run the algorithm, which takes about、uh, two or three seconds. 嗯、um, ，当你把这一些全选择了之后，它会非常非常快。就实际生实际的操作当中，就两三秒钟左右的时间，它就可以把它的这些迭代给完成。What we can see from the result is there is 200 generations, which you can see along the bottom.、Uh, each generation has a hundred、uh, solutions or, or chromosomes, so it's about 20,000 options、uh, that it's it's generated and then、uh, tested. Uh, or scored each one. 嗯，就整个过程，就刚才这个过程生成了两万个不同的，就是呃基因组嘛，生成两万个不同的方案，相当于是。我们从下面横轴代表的就是每就代数，就是它一共杂交了几代，然后对，然后然后每一代有一百个就是人口，这样子的话，相当于一共做了呃，在在这么短时间做了两万个不同的方案。So. The user can then scroll through、uh, the algorithm over those generations to see how it is. It is over time gradually improved the options and and managed to get different options. So over time, as the algorithm runs, it finds better performing master planning options based on the fitness functions that we created. 嗯、um, ，就是我们会发，就是我们来仔细的观察，就是每一代的这一些，就是染色体数据的话，我们发现它的生成方案是不断优化的。就根据我们刚才提到的这一种呃拟合方程，我们根据拟合方程来每一代去选择更优的这个呃更优的设计嘛，然后通过每一代的这个拟合方程进行淘汰跟选择，然后每一代都会有一些进步，然后最后发现它会越这这些方案的。合理性会根据你和方程越变越好。呃、uh, ，if the planner finds an option that it or they like, they can then push it into the model and start working with it. So the algorithm is not intended to find a single best solution because there often isn't one. It is allowing our planners and stakeholders 
to simply look at a much larger landscape of possible options. Um, 就是我们理解，其实可能不会，就是设计项目不会有一个最优解，而是同时存在非常多的，就是次优解或者某一个方面是最优，但是整体来说最协调最好。Um, 所以说我们通过这种方式可以去就是探查，就是在每一代当中的一些不同的就是设计方案，然后综合他们的优劣，得出一个我们对对客户目标最最最符合的一个设计方案。The next tool I'd like to share with you is what we call the data wrangler,、uh, and this is a much more,、uh, I'd say, common tool、uh, that is is used by basically across. Globally. Um. 下面我们介绍的这个工具叫 Data Wrang Data Wrangler. 这是嗯、um, 这这这个工具的名称我我一直很有疑问啊。呃，我我们管就是它是一个数据管理跟数据可视工具。然后直译的话叫做数据牧羊人，就是它其实是一个储存、整理和数据的过程。这个是这是一个更加就是普遍、更加嗯。Um, 就是说被被更多人用利用的一个，在不同的情景、不同的平台都可以使用。This tool, uh, simply allows us to attach data to or create parameters which can then be attached to、uh, geometry. Um, so on the right, you're seeing the interface with all the parameters attached to different volumes. 嗯、um, ，这个工具的就是核心目标就是把。数据，呃，集合到，呃，集合到几何形状上面。然后我们可以看到最右边就是我们去设置这一些数据，就是给每一个，嗯，形状进行赋值的一个过程。This is, you can think of this tool as similar to, uh, somewhat like Revit in the sense that we're attaching data to objects, but the models are much more lightweight. Uh, we often use these models、uh, at the start of a project, and what it allows us to do is quickly test different design options and understand how, what the data impacts are of those design options. Um, this this one will this one tool actually it looks very much like Revit, but it actually is because because Rhino based, it is based on Rhino system development, so it will be very very lightweight and very very lightweight and very very lightweight. 所以说非常适合我们前期对大量的设计方案进行探讨，而且从可视化工具来进行就很快的数据支持的决定。So in this example, which you're seeing, which is the test fit、uh, tool that we designed,、uh, all the data that's attached attached to、um, say rectangles is updated as the rectangles are, are changed. So in this case, as the rectangles are pushed and pulled, the data is read. And workstations are generated, so we can very quickly understand what、uh, office planning impacts they have. For example, how many、uh, seats、uh, would we be able to fit on this level, or how much circulation, for example? Um, this is is we are now showing the proposal is a is for the office space and the office space allocation proposal. 方案的进行讨论，然后它的基本元素其实就是一个呃长方形，然后根据这个长方形，我们会把数据放在里面，同时它会很很智能的生成这一个就是一个粗粗粗略的，呃、座座位的这个排布，然后通过这个排布我们可以看得见就是，呃、它的需要去考虑的每一个参数，就是它需要、呃、实现了多少座位、使用包面积这一些。Uh, this also works at a much larger scale. So this is a project that we did、uh, a little while ago in Philadelphia, which allowed us to attach all the costing data to the、um, early design model. So we could understand how different design options, what kind of impact they had on the number of、uh, offices that could fit into the building, number of workstations, but most importantly in this example, what cost implications. Uh, the different design options have. 嗯，这是一个嗯早期项目，是在那个费城，在费城的一个嗯项目。这个项目的独特之处在于，我们在项目非常早期就把它的就是嗯
造价因素给给放在了设计方案当中，然后通过来观察，就是每一个不同设计方案来得出，就是直观的感受到，而且右边会有一个表格嘛，呃，一一一个透视，数据透视图嘛，就可以很直观的感受到，就是每一个不同方案带来的造价上面的，甚至每一个设计的改动造成的就是造价上面的差异，这些造价都放在了哪里？ But we're also using it at a much more micro scale.、Uh, so here, an example of a recent project that Leo worked on allowed us to quickly analyze、uh, sight lines of this nursing unit to understand how,、uh, or to analyze how the layout of a nursing nursing、uh, unit, how efficient it was、um, based on the vis visibility breakdown of the facility. 嗯、uh, ，这个是我帮助完成的一个项目啊。这个项目其实就是来帮助你来观察，就我我我们会除了非常大的就是总体的方案来讲，我们会也会观察一些就是项目的细节，就来衡量这些呃这一些不同的就是嗯、呃、结构来造成的影响。这个呢是是一个就医院的情景，这中间这个小人在走的位置呢是一个就是呃护士护士站。然后我们来衡量，就护士站能看到，就是透视的比例能观察到，呃，病房的数目。然后这个作为一个很直观的，就是呃，分析的方法来优化，嗯，就是护士站啊，就是这种医疗布局的具体布局、具体设计。呃、uh, ，the last example I'd like to share with you is some of the experimental work we are doing uh in the group, and this is around um. Uh, generative adversarial networks or GANs, which are a form of artificial intelligence. Um, this. So, 接下来我们呃展示的是一个非常实验性的一个项目。这个是呃对抗生成网络啊 GAN。然后这一个是一种就是现在非常火的一个神经神神经网络一个人工智能的神经学习的一个应用。呃。GANs are basically、um, an interesting. They've been around since about、uh, 2014,、um, and they're an interesting、uh, form of AI that allow、uh, AI models to generate images, and that's why they're particularly、uh, interesting for architects like myself. Um, GAN 在就是二零一四年左右就已经崭露头头角，最近非常非常在，尤其是在建筑圈里面非常非常火热。呃，原因之一呢，就是因为 GAN 是一种就是生成图像图形，呃，形状非常有效的方式。So to give you a, a bit of background about how they work,、uh, GANs are basically two different neural networks or two different、uh, AI models that are constantly fighting with each other、uh, to improve each other's function. 嗯、um, ，GAN 有两个不同的神经网络构成，然后一个是 generator， 一个是生成者，一个是 discriminator， 一个鉴别者。这两个人的身份呢，就是互相的来，就是判断对方，就去去去攻击跟判断对方的行为。通过这种方式，两个神经网络不断的通过对方来进行学习，最后达到一个比较好的结果。And so those two neural networks are the discriminator and the generator. The Discriminator, its role is to essentially、uh, learn how to distinguish、uh, images、uh, and what they're meant to look like. So, for example,、uh, in this example, the discriminator is learning、uh, based on the pixel data what is、uh, what an image of a, a person looks like, or what the image of a black and white photo of a person looks like. 嗯、um, ，具体的来讲，这个 discriminator 这个鉴鉴别器，它它这个神经网络的作用呢，就是去呃学习来鉴别，就是每个给的这这个呃训练呃训练数据里面，每每个每个训练数据都是一张图片啊，就这训练数据里面，这是一张真实图片还是一张虚假，就是呃生成的假图片。And so. Once that's learning how to determine what a photo、uh, of a person is, the generator is learning how to generate an image of a photo、uh, of a photo of a person based on some random、uh, data input. 
，呃、嗯，生成者学习需要学习的呢，就是作作为神经网络需要学习的，就是如何来。生成一张能够就是足够以假乱真骗过鉴别者一呃鉴别器的这样一个图片，根据一些就是比较随机的输入变量。And so what it attempts to do, or what the generator attempts to do, is to pass the images that it's generating into the data to the discriminator,、uh, to essentially try to fool the discriminator model. So it's trying to say to, to the discriminator, this is an image of a person. Um, 就生生成模型的，就是目的呢，就是，呃，是把这一个就是，呃，生成网络的这一个图片，就放在这一堆就是输，呃，鉴别图鉴别者的输入里面，然后试图骗过鉴别者。这是一张让他认为这是一张真实的图。And so the discriminator will look at the image、uh, or analyze the pixel data of the image, and then determine whether it's real, whether it's a real photo of a person, or if it's fake. If it if it determines that it's a fake image, that gets、um, pushed back to the generator, and so the generator has to get、uh, better at generating images. Whereas if it determines that it's a, a real photo, then the discriminator needs to get better. Determining whether it's real or fake. Um, so it says its reaction is like this. If it determines that it's a fake image, it will punish the discriminator and it will punish the generator for not having done its job and will make the next one 然后，如果这一张是真的图片，呃，这这这一张图片成功的骗过了，嗯、呃，这个生成器的话，那么它就有一个正向的这样的过程，然后生成器反而需要去学习。So what this GAN is essentially doing is it's training the generator to basically generate、uh, images that are、uh, almost photorealistic. 呃、uh, ，所以说这一个呃神经呃神经对抗网生成网络，它的嗯就是主要的功能呢，就是去训练一个能够生成足以以假乱真图像图形呃图片的一个一个一个模型。So, uh, to give you an example, here are a few um ways that it, it has been applied. Um, so on the left, what you're seeing is the input data to the generator. And on the right is the images that the generator has been trained to generate based on that input. So, for example, turning a black and white photo into a color photo, or turning a Google aerial photo into a Google map. Um, 就是这是一些就是 Gan 的在在就实际生活当中那些嗯不能叫实际生活一些已经已经有的应用，比如说把一些就是嗯。标识图像就是一些非常简的，嗯，就是非真实的图像变成看上去足以假乱真的一个图像，比如说像中间的这一个，嗯，生成就是建筑外立面，生成街景，然后或者右边的像是生成这种黑白照片给它上色，或者是就是啊、嗯，呃，卫星地图呃，卫星图片转化成就是类似于谷歌街景呃谷呃呃百度地图的这种网呃样子样式。或者说把白天变到黑夜，或者把简笔画变成一个看上去像真实一样的图片。So this is、uh, basically what I was experimenting with recently to try to use GANs to see if we could generate、um, basically renders from sketches. And so in the images you're seeing here, the top、uh, sketches are what Uh, I wanted to have as the input, so the user has a sketch, and then ideally it would generate photos. So the bottom row isn't the result; the bottom is、uh, simply photos of houses, which the goal was. Um, so you say Jeremy 的这一个就实验呢，就是试图通过上面的这种简笔画来生成下面的这一种就是更加真实的、就实际的房子的图片。然后上面的这简笔画呢，就是这一个，就是这这这个模型的输入端。下面呢是它达需要达到的目标
，但他不是，嗯，他只是他达到需要达到目标而已。And so, uh, the data sets, um, I had to create, uh, were quite difficult. So these types of models, uh, require a lot of data. And so what I needed was a lot of photos of houses, which was easy because that's what I was going to train the discriminator on. But in order to get these sketches,、um, I had to、um, sketch over、uh, a lot of houses. Um, 就是这一个，其实训练每一个神经网络都需要比较大量的数据支持。然后这一个呢，我们就需要在真实的，嗯，就图片上面来进行。一个啊， uh, 就是描描，就给他描边嘛。就 Jeremy 描了不少边。So once I had all the the sketches of the houses, I started to train the generator. And so the next slide you'll see is the generator trying to generate photos of houses, which, as you'll see over time, it gets gradually better and better. 嗯、um, ，就是我们在嗯。Um, 就是说，有了这一些数据之后，就是有了这一些简笔画之后，就可以来进行，就是嗯，真正的训练了。Oops. Excuse me. And so those are the these are those those images being generated. At the start, they are very bad. Uh, and over time, the generator starts to learn、uh, sort of what the, the foreground is usually green and the background is usually blue, and doors usually have a different colour to the windows and things like this, which is quite interesting. Um, 这是就这六张图片展示的是就是整个训练过程当中不断体现的就是输出，就可以刚上来的时候它其实是比较就是不像一个嗯。Um, 房子的状态，但是慢慢的它就会变得越来越像一个房子。然后这个我我们会有有一些有趣的发现，比如说，嗯，这个 Dan 会慢慢的学习到，就是前面的这个一般都会是一个草坪，绿色的草坪。然后就是每一个就是入门呢，一般会跟窗户颜色是不一样的，像这一些，会慢慢的学习到。Once I had finished training the model,、uh, I Turn the model into a web application to allow people to test sketching their own house to see what what photo might be generated. Um, 在他就是完成了就是这一个训练之后，他把这一个呃小的就是神经训神经网络模型放到了网上，让大家来画一画，看看他们能得到什么样的就是房子的样子。And so here's that web application where The user can sketch in the house、uh, and excuse the quality because it's my bad sketching. But you can see the the GAN model then tries to generate a photo of that house, which comes up with some pretty interesting results. Um, 就是这个是嗯更更正一下，刚才放在网上准确说法是做的一个啊网网页端的小程序。然后就是我们通过这网页小程序的实验可以看到，就是说。嗯，当然 ，Jamie 开了玩笑说，就是，嗯，我他手画的不好，但是我们能够看到，就是说，根据这样的手画，也能够就是做出，就是神经对抗网络 GAN 也能做出一个比较像是真正房子的这样的一个图片来。呃、uh, ，What's interesting is I trained the data set on a very very small data set, so only about 160 images of a house. Uh, and considering that very small data set, the results were very encouraging, because、um, given more sketches, given more data,、um, these GANs can become very powerful to generate very, very realistic images based on、uh, sketches or, or floor plans or whatever the data input we want、uh, might be. 嗯，非常值得一提的是，就是整个就是训练的过程，它只用了一百六十个，就是不同的，就是图片，就是这个房子的图片，简单图片，嗯，所需要的就是数据量，相对于其他的神经网络来说是非常非常小的，嗯，所以说我们觉得这一个过程，如果我们有更多数据的话，它会产生一个非常非常好的结果。
that's all I've got tonight to show you on, on some of the data driven design tools and workflows that we're developing. Um, it's been a, a great privilege to um, spend this time with all of you and I appreciate um, the opportunity uh, in, in doing so. Um uh, if there's any questions, feel free to ask, or if you'd like to get in touch, feel free to reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, someone is um, asking a question in the in the group chat, Jeremy, if you can see it. Will uh, effect of using VAE be better? Um, what exactly is VAE? Um, VAE is to be honest, uh, I don't know. I haven't uh, explored variational encoder uh, at all yet. But I think this is... Yeah. Sorry. Um, what was that, Leo? No, no, no. I, I was just trying to um, um, add a little bit extra, but uh, you, you can oh, go first. Another generative model. Well, thanks for the suggestion. I'll, I'll certainly have a look at um, VAEs because I haven't explored them yet, but um, it sounds like it could be interesting. Thank you. Thank you. 他可以下一步进行尝试，然后再跟你更新这个问题。So I see another question. How 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 many data do you need to train the GANs you I presented? So the GAN that I presented, it I trained it on um, only 160 sketches uh, or 160 houses, which is very very small. Um, a, a GAN of production quality. Uh, you might need 30,000 or more images. Um, 就是第二个问题是, 你的这个训练数据大概有多少? Um, 然后Jimmy的回答是, 他在这一个项目当中用了160个数据点, 然后如果你需要做一个就是比较大的, Jimmy was the data a volume for, for, for commercially realistic pro project on a thousand, uh, 10,000? Uh, so a good example, which NVIDIA showed, was 30,000 uh, images um, trained on. Um, NVIDIA, which is the Xianca company, has a very good example. They used 3,000 images. I see another question. What kind of factors are considered for fitness score? So uh, it's a good question. Uh, a fitness score in a generative model can be whatever, um, whatever measurable metric you're trying to optimize. So an example is um, a fitness score, if you were trying to generate a volume or a cube, a fitness score could be as simple as you're trying to get it to a specific uh, area cubed based on changes to the width and height. So the fitter score can be whatever you want it to be, as long as it's measurable. Um, Jeremy, you just answered the third question. Is what kind of? I'm not sure if this is correct. Is it 
Finisco， 有有没有人能够在群里面帮我翻译一下这个词我真的不知道该怎么翻译比较好，就是呃，类似于他的就是怎么样来个评价，就是刚才看的这个。嗯、um, ，遗传算法里面的每一个，嗯、um, ，每一个方案更好啊？因素，呃、uh, ，finis c o r e 是因因因素是吗？好的，嗯、um, ，然后 Jamie 的回答是他觉他他认为就是每一个就是每一个项目可能有所不同，取决于你要优化什么东西，你可以把它定为一个就是嗯、um, 就是拟合的因素来看待，然后来就是。就是向这一方面来优化，因为 f i n i s c o r e 本身是用来，呃、嗯，就是衡量你这个呃、嗯、方案是不是好的。然后他举的例子是说，如果你比如说想想要更大的，就是啊、嗯，更就是这个体量更大体积的话，你的输入可能是乘宽高，然后你的你的 f i n i s c o r e 就是看它有多大。呃、uh, ，Is that is that okay, Liu? I I um I th I think the example I I I actually got a little bit um I forgot to your example is it um the finish score you're referring to is the volume? Well, uh, uh, all I was saying is a, a fitness score is anything that's measurable.、Mm. So if you want to, you know, a fitness score could be as simple as the volume of a cube,、uh, and、mm. by changing the length and the width, you might get a volume that's close to a target volume. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 就、yeah. 是、yeah. so, 说，你比如说，你的你的 fitness goal 可以定做一个，就是啊、uh, 特定的一个，就是体积大小。然后你来去衡量，就是比如说你在更改它的长宽高的时候，它怎么样会更加的拟合到这一个特定的大小上。嗯，我觉得这样解释可能会比较好一些。嗯、um, ，Let me know if he needs more of an answer for that, Leo, and I'll try to.、Yeah. I think it should be alright. 如如果如果各位觉得我刚没有解释清楚的话，可以可以继续再问一下。就是因为我在边翻译边试图解释，好像是有一些就说的比较混乱一些。然后如果大家还没有弄，吉米如果没有弄明白的话，可以继续就是再问一下。嗯、um, ，In the meantime, sorry, Leo. Let's move on to the next question while we're waiting. Yep. So there's another question.、Um, how large is the GAN? How many layers and units? How long do you check? Take to train the model of this level.、Um, so I used a、um, pre、uh, pre developed model or pre developed GAN,、um, but I think GANs typically have three layers.、Um, but this one I used a、um, TensorFlow model, which is based on Pix to Pix,、um, which is quite a well known GAN model. So if you have a look for that, you, you'll be able to get a little bit more information about it.、Um, The actual time again was very small. I only trained it for about three hours, so you can imagine with more time and data, these models can get quite、uh, impressive results. Um, Jimmy 用了一个已经就预训练呃预训练好的模型，然后一般的就是 GAN 模型有两层，然后这一个是一个 TensorFlow 的一个一个例子。嗯、um, ，TensorFlow， 我不确定有没有中文翻译，如果有的话，麻烦大家打在下面啊。然后，呃，就是 TensorFlow 这个例子里面是就是点对点，就是一个像素是一个点的这样这样一个 unit。然后，嗯、um, ，How long？ 我有点忘了。Jeremy， how long did you train the network again？ So I trained it for、um, only about three hours. But if you were do, if you were doing a, a production level GAN。You would, might train it for three days. 嗯，就是如果你你他做的这个只用了三个小时，因为可能数据量比较小。然后如果你是要做到就是真正就商用的话，可能需要好几天。Um, so another question that's come through is, Hi Jeremy, what do you think development on Revit using Dynamo compared to Rhino using Grasshopper? Or even the newest runner inside. When do we need to explore the Revit API to take data out to analysis?、Um, so there's a few questions there.、Um, I think Dynamo and Revit. Dynamo is good for、um, automating work in Revit. It's a very simple way to get into the, the Revit API. 
um, Rhino and Grasshopper is very good at complex geometry. So I tend to use Revit and Dyno, Dynamo for automation and um, Revit data analysis. And then Rhino and Grasshopper for all geometry operations. Um, 就是首先, um, 周明回答了下一个问题是, uh, 问了, 我先回答, 翻译一下题目啊, 问的是就是, uh, 问Jeremy, 在, um, 开发Revit和Dynamo相关的插件, uh, 相关的脚本和, uh, Rhino, Grasshopper, 就是草蜢脚本之间,就是有什么区别吗? 然后, uh, 或者现在的Rhino Insight, 然后, uh, 我们, when we need to explore the rabbit, what do you think? Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know what that last sentence means. Um, I, I think he was asking, what do you think we need to explore the rabbit API to take data to analyze? Um, I think, uh, you can do as much as you need with getting data from Revit with Dynamo. Um, but I think if you want to automate more work in Revit, then more knowledge of the Revit API is uh, helps a lot. Okay, well, well, okay. Let me try to translate before I totally forget. Yeah. Um. 首先就就这个问题就先问了一下，就是说对于就 Revit Dynamo 然后 Grasshopper 呃 um, Grasshopper 还有现在的 Rhino Inside， 如果大家了解的话，就是把就是 Rhino 植入 Revit 当中做成一个插件，然后可以直接在 Revit 里面运行 Run 呃。Rhino 和, uh, 和 Grasshopper 还有 Revit API 就是来直接来把这个数据导出来进行就是分析当然就是提问的案例已经谢谢了已经理解了我给大家进行翻译好了就是首先嗯嗯 然后同时就是Revit 跟 Dynamo 更适合做一些就是像中后期有很多data时候做一些analysis。像中后期有很多数据的时候做一些就分析。然后,did you respond to Rhino Inside? Um, no, I think Rhino Inside is good um, if you want to generate uh, complex geometry in Revit. Rhino Inside就是现在把Rhino植入Revit当中的话是一个 可能会比较好的，就生成就是Revit呃几何形状的一个方法。然后还有我们去呃最后一个问题，就是Revit API的话，的确是一个呃，尤其是如果想好好运用Revit数据的话，非常有用的。嗯，hopefully um, I see Alan said thanks, so hopefully that answers um his question. Um, I think he answers, yeah. And so what I can't, what is it? The ones below that, Leo, where it says TensorFlow and then Fitness. Um, oh, he was trying to um, respond to my questions to the audience when I was trying to ask how, how to translate TensorFlow. Okay. People okay. all know what is TensorFlow, so that's fine. And the next one was um, responding to my confusion of fitness function, fitness yeah. call, as I don't understand how to translate that. And they came up with um, uh, the term of um, Shi Yun Du, which okay. is quite amazing. Yeah. Cool. We can move um, on to the next question. Yeah, so the question, how do I, how do I develop the auto sketch of the photos? Is it run by OpenCV? Um, I started, when I first started experimenting, I used OpenCV, but I found the results were very unpredictable. Um, so in the end, I used my own hand sketches um, because it allowed me to uh, it allowed the generator to understand uh, a human sketch and how that translates to a photo um, rather than OpenCV, which would produce uh, a lot of lines that wouldn't necessarily be sketched. Um, Jeremy的回答是他最初的时候是用了OpenCV,然后得出的结论是,就是他感觉到OpenCV会产生一些意想不到的就是数据。然后所以说他决定用手画的，就是他自己来亲自来描这个边，然后他认为这一点就是是一个真的就提供告诉机器人是怎么来描这个边的一个非常准确的数据。嗯，so um, next question 
from Justin for Data Wrangler, Data Wrangler, which, if I'm correct, is an open open office space planning and layout design tool. How large the data set need to be, and how do you gather good quality data in order to train the model? Um, data Wrangler is a bit simpler than that. Data Wrangler is just a tool that attaches parameters to geometry. So um, very simple uh, kind of key value properties to a bit of geometry. What that then allows us to do is add data to geometry that we can then analyze. Um, and so on an office space, the data set might be a lot of different data sets such as um, you know, staff locations, uh, workstation locations, um, and also a lot of surveys that we gather from the, the users. Um, I think the, the person who asked the question already understood. I'm just trying to translate this question and answer in general in a shorter version then. Okay, all right. Uh, so, just when Justin Wang when the share uh data wrangler to the shoot you should um she uh she go to the shoot 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 the 就把数据按到几何图形上面 uh, Jeremy, I, I need to ask you if there is um, any data set we used. You mentioned about a particular project, but I somehow just forgot. Yeah, um, the data sets that we use on those projects are, are typically um, provided by the client. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, for a university, for example, they might give us all their data about where their researchers are located or um, uh, an office plan might give us all their um, staff data or where they're located. Mm -hmm. So it's usually private data from the client. Um, 就是每个学院、每一个教室的容量需要的人数，然后如果是办公室环境的话，可能就是他们通常就是人会在哪里这样的一些，有一些是公共的，有一些可能是比较比较私密的一些数据。嗯，下一个，sorry，you go there。I think you probably can start answering the next question. Yep. So. Um, for the three tool cases you presented, which way do I develop programming or grasp the script? Um, because of the amazing UIs, thank you for the compliment. Um, the, the way that I developed these tools, so I developed, um, I developed all the tools except the data wrangler. So I developed the master planning tool and the, the module planning tool and the GAN model. Um, the, the master planning tool and the module tool, I, I develop it in Visual Studio using C Sharp for Rhino plugins. And then the GAN was developed in Python, uh, in TensorFlow, in Python and JavaScript. And the Data Wrangler tool is, again, a C Sharp plugin, but then all the Data Wrangler UIs are done with Grasshopper. OK, I'll just 
它的我们的许多工具上面的，嗯，用户界面非常的漂亮。然后 Jeremy 首先先感谢他的夸赞，然后嗯，其次就是这三个工具当中有两个是 Jeremy 自己亲自完成的，然后呃有三个有三四个工具中有三个，嗯，第一个是呃 Master Plan， 就是呃就是校园规划的那个工具，然后。这一个是呃用的微软的呃 v i r o Studio 中文，我不确定怎么翻译，如果有会翻译的麻烦在下面打一下，谢谢。嗯、呃，用 Vero 用 v i r o Studio 加上呃 C Sharp 就是这个呃 C C Sharp 工呃 C Sharp 语言来编写的。然后第二个这一个 Modular 就这一个这个模块模就是。模模块编辑器就是，呃、嗯，做这个实验室规划的这一个也是用同样的方法。然后 GAN 这一个是用 Tensor， 呃，是是是是用的是，呃、um, ，Sorry， 呃、um, ，Jeremy， as for the the GAN model， did you、yeah. did you compile it in the in the IDE as well in in Vero Studio?、Um, or is... Trying to remember.、Um... I I just wrote that all as Python scripts and then、mm -hmm. executed them. So I I wrote it in just using any IDE. I used Visual Code. Hmm. Um. Then the GAN one should be using Visual Visual Studio Code, which is Visual Studio's free version, plus using Python language and a little bit of Java. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
嗯，如果大家还想知道更多的话，可以直接从英领上来就找到 Jeremy， 然后反正屏幕下方有他的这个链接啊，可以可以来记一下啊，然后可以随时的问他。Um, another question for you is,、um, do you think this type of tools we just introduced、um, somehow reduced、um, the part? The, the functionality or the power or, or, or the utility of、um, an architect or the role that architects used to occupy? Um, uh, not really. I think these tools、um, are simply another tool for the architect to use.、Um, in everything that we build,、um, it is always the architect that is the curator of the tool. And、um, I don't think these tools will lead to、uh, diminishing design.、Uh, I think, if anything, they'll allow us to、uh, explore more design、um, freedom. Basically, allow us、uh, more time and freedom to explore different design and forms. 嗯 ，Jimmy 不不认为这些工具削弱了建筑师的作用。因为这些我们的这些工具呢，使用者是建筑师，他们有就掌握这些这这些工具的决定权。然后同时呢，这些就工具能够帮助设计师更有效率的、更更更有效率的探索他们的设计方案，而且涉及的更高、更更多、更广。然后这也是在帮助设计师完成他们的工作。Did that answer the question? I'm not. I think so. Yeah.、Uh, can I add something to it? Yeah. 嗯、uh, ，我我我希望就是就是我也能够参与一下这个话题。我希望提供一些更更多的见解。我也我也认为，其实我们的工具不会就是真正的削弱建筑师或者本这个行当的作用，而是让让所有的行当跟呃让所有的信息就是沟通起来更加的顺畅，让每个行当呃每一个行业有就是相互交融的这样一个过程，给大家提供。就不仅仅是建筑师，而是每个行业作为每一个角色上面有更多的就是发挥作用的能力。通过通过数字设计的工具。Yeah, I just mentioned that、um, the idea I had is、um, I, I think with this sort of tools is everyone can play each other's role and、uh, it's actually enhance everyone's ability to make a greater decision to cover yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, and that is.、Um... That that's why the tools、um, that at the moment I'm building、uh, don't rely on、um, Grasshopper or Dynamo because if it's just in Rhino or Revit,、um, more people in the design team can access and use them.、Um, so it's not just the computational designers that take advantage of them.、Um, so so it's a matter of platform, you reckon? Uh, it's just a matter of、um, reducing complexity,、mm. so that、um, it's more accessible. Um. And Jeremy, 同时也就是添添加了一点点就是想法，就是说，嗯，就不仅仅是从 Revit 跟 Dynamo 上面，我们也可以用 Rhino 和 Grasshopper， 也是用这些呃、嗯、工具，让它变得更简单，更多的人可以更更容易的掌握跟使用。这也是对 computational design 来讲非常非常，就是计算设计来讲非常非常有。Um, 需要的，需需要去改进的一点。And the person、uh, who asked the question also、um, made a comment on that. He says、um, the the scientific、um, method method for for making decisions. Actually, I I don't think is yeah it is. Let me try to translate that again.、Um, he's saying that、um, we we should depend on the、um, method that is scientific to make decisions, but not only by empirical knowledge, not only by experience. Yeah, I agree,、uh, and that's that is the the goal of the data driven design team is to objectively come to design decisions.、Uh, but I think、uh, for some designers, it's it's also the uh, uh, I think a motive response to to design problems in some cases. So we like to use a bit of both. Hmm, 就是 Jeremy 赞同你的想法。嗯，嗯。Sorry, Jeremy. To be honest,、yeah. I forgot the last part. Can you say that again?、Um, I was just saying that I that I agree that、um, we are trying to use data more for、um, mm -hmm. 
to come to design decisions, but in most cases, we find that there's a, a bit of both because mm -hmm. there are there are sometimes data doesn't tell us the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Yep. So um Jeremy showed you I think okay. Uh, I, uh, may I have a question? Uh, yeah. during me, uh, one uh, I just saw uh, one slide in your presentation. Uh, there is the the uh, the test test fit logo. Yeah. So uh, can um. I, I wonder, I, uh, uh, may I know that the, uh, currently, do you have any uh, collaborative work with them? And uh, I, I, in my opinion, the test, test feature, their uh, pr products, the solution is, uh, has a faster iteration. So uh, do you, could you feel free to give some comments on on their products <laughs> something else um, thank you yeah so um so the test fit i showed um it, it wasn't the test fit io product it was um something that one of our team members developed to test fit um workstation or office layouts so it was an internal tool um, but we it's just got the same name um but uh, that aside, um, TestFit IO, their products, um, it's quite interesting. Um, I think the fact that they're developing um, these uh, generative tools um, outside of, you know, the proprietary ecosystem of tools such as Rhino and Revit is promising because um, it gives us more options to explore uh, different tools. I do think that um, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's very focused on a particular uh, sector. So while it, it's interesting, it doesn't have much use in the work that we do, but um, I think it's promising as a, as a design tool. I know okay, that was let me translate first. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to forget all. Um, 我先来翻译一下 对于办公室数据可视化的一个小工具 然后，但是我们就是从HDR的角度来看的话，呃，我们可能要涵盖的面或者设计的角度要比它广很多。Testfit可能是在针对于某一个特定的建筑产品做的一个更加就是专精的一个事情。You can continue. Um, uh, did that answer his question? I'm not. Um, yeah. Yeah, and someone just say what what a coincidence <laughs> that uh, names are test fit. Yeah, <laughs> very similar. Very interesting. But it does cover the instance of test fit itself. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 test fit I would like to answer this question as well. Um, yeah. I observed the test fit and all their um training videos as well. And if oh, when I'm speaking English. 
，嗯，就是我其实前一阵子的时候也也也试了一下 Test Fit， 还有就是咱们中国好像有个叫小酷的产品，还有嗯，澳洲我们澳洲有一个叫 Aki 嗯 Aki Star 的产品，这三个产品其实本质上都很像，都是用生生呃都是用生成设计来解决建筑的一些问题，尤其这个问题就是我们可能在嗯就是做做排。尤其是布局排布的时候，就会发花大量的心血来，就是去去进行优化，然后去生成更多的方案来取悦客户。嗯，我我我有两个感觉，一个是现在不论是 Test Fit 也好 a r c h i s t a r 也好，还是中国的小库也好，可能都不够优化，就是它就是可能建筑商关注呃开发商关注的是可能最后一套房子，就是你怎么样把更多的内容塞进去，只有到这几个工具能够。精密到它能够算出，就是最后那那一平米的空间来的时候，可能他们都没法做出最优化的结论，只能说是大面上给你一个方向。当然，他们在就前期的时候已经解决非常多的问题，我觉着就是是一个非常非常好的方向。而且据我所知，就是这些公司都在就很很很紧锣密鼓的研发当中，就是希望他们未来会有更好、更更更优秀的产品，然后。嗯，我觉得这个方向就是生成式设计是绝对没有问题，它像是一个需要前人去添砖加瓦的过程。我觉得十年前就是生成式设计已经对，嗯，就是生成建筑方案有一定的，就是嗯，有有一定探索了。当时在我记得西班牙有一个 PhD 做了一个类似的，做了一个生成式建筑的大楼，然后每一个就里面有生成设计每一个公寓的位置，然后他们以与就是这个整个大楼的，就是结构去互相的，嗯，去去互动，然后保证就结构不会冲突到一些主要的功能空间里面，嗯，其实就是这个探索是在不断细化、不断不断符合当地市场要求的一个过程，嗯，我觉得蛮不错的。I was just bringing up the the test fit, um, Archistar and、um, X Cool stories, and just trying to make a little bit comment. I think I've mentioned this to you before, so I'll skip it.、Uh, Yeah, cool. Okay. Is that all of it? All the questions? I think that's probably it. Cool. Well, thanks again, everyone, for、uh, having me,、uh, allowing me to join you guys tonight. It was, it was a lot of fun. 再次非常感谢各位，让我们能够在今晚上，啊、嗯，就是给大家做一做做做这样一期演讲，非常非常感谢你们。然后我们觉得非非常的享受这一个过程。也谢谢，呃，也谢谢，对，也也谢谢庄庄群主这么庄主席，这么这么这么这么用心的组织这一场，非常感谢，嗯，也谢谢各位的到来。Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jeremy. We are really appreciate your time and your support. My pleasure. Thank you. Let's keep in touch. Sounds good. Thank you. 谢谢各位。那我们就今天就结束。嗯，好。好的。Okay, I think we can call it the day. Alright, thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you so much. Bye bye. My pleasure. Bye.